Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to be here with you today. Uh, well, I'm a clinician, I am a neurologist, so uh, we will totally change the point of view uh, from the basic science to the clinical point of view. And uh, I will try to review the age-related uh, neurodegeneration, which is a complex uh, topic, but we will try uh, to focus mainly in three uh, aspects. First, we will briefly review what uh, neurodegeneration is, and then we will focus on human, normal human, braging, bra uh, human bra aging human brain. Uh, basically, we will review some important aspects of the neuropathology of the normal uh, aging human brain, and then we will uh, also review some important aspects of uh, the clinical expression of, uh, of, the, of the cognitive changes in the elderly. In the last uh, uh, slides, we will uh, remark some important points of the neurodegenerative uh, diseases. Well, we all get older. Even this beautiful girl, girl probably you, remind, uh, you remember her, was the cover of the National Geographic uh, uh, Journal some years ago. And our brain also gets uh, older. How? Well, uh, all you know, um, my, uh, the previous talks, my colleagues before um, say some things about uh, what happens in cells uh, during the old age, but neurodegeneration is the progressive loss of function uh, of neurons, and including the, the death of the neurons. And all the cells in the central nervous systems are affected by, uh, by age, but uh, not, uh, there is a huge variability between uh, people, between cells, and between um, how uh, we, how people compensate the, defici the deficits of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the senescence in the brain. Well, um, as my colleagues say before, um, I don't know, uh, yeah. Uh, the cells in the brain uh, are damaged by ox oxidative stress, and DNA damage, inflammation, etc. And this is uh, the a scenario uh, that we. Um, uh, is, this is the this, this scenario we have in the old age. But in this scenario, we can have some risk factors or some protective factors for neurodegenerative diseases. For example. We can have some genetic risk factors for Alzheimer's, like ApoE4. Also, for you, we can have some genetic mutations associated with neurodegenerative diseases. For example, we can have a mutation in alpha synuclein gene, which is a risk factor for Parkinson's disease. We can have also environmental risk factor for these diseases, such as, for example, uh, physical and mental inactivity that we know we, that is a risk factor for Alzheimer's. But we can uh, be in the other side of the slide. We can have some neuroprotective uh, uh, factors that in this scenario, even if we have all these, we will never develop a neurodegenerative disease. Um, the reality is that all we, uh, when we wet, get older, all we have a loss uh, of our brain uh, volume, especially uh, after the age of 55, 60 years, our brain um, becomes uh, atrophy. Uh, in fact, uh, in the last year, we have several studies with functional and structural uh, MRI, and we can see, we can see that um, different areas in the brain have different uh, risk of being uh, more atrophic. For example, we know today that the prefrontal cortex, the uh, more frontal part of the brain in the, in the frontal uh, lobe, is one of the most uh, um, affected areas of the brain by age. Um, also, we know that the white matter, especially in the frontal uh, lobe, is very, very affected uh, with age. And we can also observe some regional blood flow and some other uh, abnormalities, for example, in the functional connectivity in the brain with uh, age. Uh, if we can see a brain uh, 
uh, a microscopic brain, we know uh, that uh, when we are old, uh, this brain uh, ha have a lot, has a lot of atrophy. And we can also see this uh, in an MRI. And um, this slide, I think, is very important because we can have four different scenarios when, when we uh, are uh, old. Here we can have a normal, uh, a healthy aging without uh, brain pathology, with normal cognition. In the other side, we can have uh, abundant pathology, neuropathology, but abnormal and also abnormal cognition. This is, this is a cognitive decline or dementia. But I would like to focus your attention in these two uh, parts of the slide. Um, we can have this situation. We can have a normal cognition with age. We can, have a, we can have an old person with normal cognition, but with abundant pathology in their brain. That now we will um, focus in this situation. And we can have in the other part of the slide, we can have a, an abnormal condition, cognition, but without pathology in the brain. That is what uh, we, uh, we name cognitively frail aging. We know that with age, we have some, um, uh, we, we have some neuropathological changes very commonly. First, cerebrovascular disease. It's very frequent, frequently, especially in very old ages, we know that it's very, clinic, it's very frequent to have clinically silent cerebrovascular events. For example, this very small infarct that we call lacuum infarct. These are very common. Uh, we can uh, see these lesions uh, in an MRI. Uh, you can see that even um, 80, almost 80% 80 of people over 80 years old can have white matter hyperintensities. We can here observe some of these in the MRI. These are very common. Uh, we can have these lesions even with 20, 30 years old, but they are even more common when we, uh, when we get older. And if we could get a microscope examination of all old people, we can see that even 90, almost 90% of people over the age of 90 have these brain lesions. So um, in some uh, way, we can consider that uh, cerebrovascular lesions are very, very frequently in old age. Almost could be a normal uh, condition during the elderly. Uh, for example, here we can observe some uh, studies uh, where we can see that uh, since the age, since the fifth decade of life, we ha it's very frequent to have this, and especially in the eighth, uh, in the eighth and ninth uh, um, decades of life, it's very very common. Another important uh, situation that uh, it's more recently, um, we know now that um, old people have a very increase, uh, a very increase, uh, very increase um, frequency of hippocampal sclerosis. Uh, for us, for neurologists, hippocampal sclerosis is synonymous of epilepsy. It's very frequent in young people, epilepsy, uh, secondary to this situation, hippocampal sclerosis. But now we know that in old people, especially in extreme old people, uh, this hippocampal sclerosis is also very common and is related with cognitive decline. The hippocampus, um, as you know, oh, sorry, as you know, memory is in the hippocampus, uh, here, and um, in, in the case of old people, we see that uh, here in the hippocampus there is uh, deposits of um, a protein, uh, which we call TDP43, which is a, pro a protein that we observe in frontotemporal dementia and other uh, neurodegenerative diseases. So now we know that also in uh, a normal uh, elderly, we can also observe this uh, hippocampal sclerosis, and, and that is strongly correlated with cognitive decline. 
But we also, uh, today we know that um, it's very frequent also in the elderly to have uh, protein aggregation. As we will review in some in the next minutes, um, the, neurodegenerative, the neurodegenerative diseases, uh, now we try to classify them as proteinopathies. We know that Alzheimer's is a, a amyloidopathy with deposits of, also of tau protein. We know that, that Parkinson, Parkinson's is a synucleinopathy with deposits of alpha-synuclein. Uh, but um, in the last uh, years, there is a um, uh, uh, some studies, some neuropathological studies that show us that um, we can also see these abnormal proteins in the brain of elder people. For example, it's very frequent to have beta amyloid, which is the one of the main important uh, of the main proteins we observe in Alzheimer's, but we can also observe uh, beta amyloid in almost 70% uh, of elder people without cognitive impairment. Other proteins like, like alpha-synuclein, which is the protein Parkinson's disease have in the brain, and also tau, uh, almost 25% of cognitively intact elder, elder people have uh, these proteins in the brain. Even uh, more, um, it's very frequent in uh, old age to have copathology, to have mixed pathology, some uh, of mixture of these proteins in the brain, even with a, cognitive a normal cognitive performance. So uh, it's normal to have a cognitive decline when we get old, so the, 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 the answer is no. Um, we can have, uh, it's not a common, it's not normal to have a cognitive de decline when we get old, but we can have impair some basic cognitive, cognitive functions like attention, memory, and uh, language processing and decision making. We can have some deficits in this um, basic cognitive function, but not in other ones. For example, it's common. I don't like to bore you with uh, this, but for example, it's very common when, we, when you are old to have some problems with selective attention. For example, it's common to have some problems um, if you try um, to focus in one thing, trying to avoid all the other things for old people is more difficult than for young people. We can have with age also problems when we have to attend to two or three or more different or more different things for old people is also more difficult than for young people. And we can have also some problems with working memory. Working memories, for example, uh, the, the part of the memory we, we, we use for remember, for example, a telephone number or to remind or to try to remember uh, um, a, a number backwards. This is working memory. And this is normal to have some problems uh, when you get old. But not all uh, other kinds of memory or other parts of the brain. So we can have with age some slight problems in some basic cognitive function, functions, but it's not normal to have a cognitive decline uh, with age. And it's important uh, to know uh, the concept of the, of the cognitive reserve uh, because um, all, all people with, uh, in old age have all these problems in the cells we previously see, like mitochondrial damage, like DNA repair problems, but not all people have a cognitive decline. So one uh, hypothesis is the concept that um, and the, the, the cognitive reserve is the ability of each individual to try to solve or to compensate the problems that we have in the cells of the central nervous systems with age. For example, and this is, uh, there are some uh, factors that have, that, uh, that make that our cognitive reserves, reserve is uh, higher. For example, high level of education or participating in cognitive uh, activities that increase our cognitive reserves. And this is very important because, for example, 
Here we have two patients. Patient one has a higher cognitive reserve than patient two, and both have the same brain damage, for example, lung stroke. Uh, and immediately, this patient two with less cognitive reserve uh, goes down the uh, threshold for, con for a cognitive impairment. However, this patient can still be cognitively uh, intact. Also, for example, if we, if we have these two patients and both have Alzheimer's, the patient with a huge, with a high reserve, cognitive reserve, needs to have more neuropathology in his brain to get uh, the cognitive impairment. It's for that, um, for the, for the, and this is, um, in the last years, it's a trending topic, it's very important, and it's for that, um, that it's very important uh, to diagnose the cognitive decline in general in people uh, and uh, to do neurocognitive rehabilitation. Tomorrow, uh, the neuropsychology, uh, we will review uh, this topic, and this is very important to try to give our patients the best um, management we can uh, give them. So, um, dementia is not a normal part of aging. Uh, but it's a huge uh, health problem today and uh, affects the, not only the patient but also the relatives and it's a very, very huge uh, economic and uh, political problem today. Um, for example, it's estimated that for uh, 2050, uh, the number of people with dementia we will be triplicate uh, in the world. And especially in uh, very old people, um, the most common dimensions are Alzheimer's, which is the most common one, and also the vascular uh, mixed dementia and frontotemporal dementia, but Alzheimer's is, of course, the most frequent uh, one. Uh, in fact, the World Health Organization and some important commissions, like the Lancet Commission, has uh, dementia like, uh, as a priority um, in the last year. <laughs> But we can have also uh, different uh, neurodegenerative diseases where we can observe different proteins in the brain, and we don't know why is that. We don't know why in Alzheimer's we, uh, the, the, the cells most affected are those from the hippocampus. We don't know why in Parkinson's we, um, the cells more affected are the, are the dopaminergic cells in the substantia nigra. We don't know why in the, in the amyotrophic lateral sclerosis we have another uh, different cells most affected. So we don't know why. And we don't know uh, why in Alzheimer's we have uh, tau and beta amyloid and we in Parkinson's have alpha synuclein aggregates in the brain. We in neurodegenerative diseases uh, still have a lot of um, questions without an uh, answer. Um, for example, some, probably you know sometimes this. Uh, this is a Levy body, which is uh, an abnormal aggregate of alpha synuclein in a, neurodopa in a dopaminergic neuron. Here we can have the typical deposits of beta amyloid in the brain of Alzheimer's people and uh, the deposits intraneuronal of tau in, uh, also in Alzheimer's, etc. Uh, so now this is the, the way we see uh, to neurodegenerative diseases. Now we, um, well, still now, but especially in the last decades, we normally see the patient, we diagnose the patient with a syndrome. For example, well, a patient has a cognitive decline uh, with a very, uh, with a, um, primarily affected the amnesic uh, function or with the um, a logopenic variant. So I think uh, he or she has Alzheimer's. Well, this patient have, for example, tremor, rigidity. This patient have Parkinson's. But uh, there is a huge overlap between neurodegenerative diseases. And sometimes we don't know what the patient have. Sometimes uh, we can... Um, uh, mix, uh, we can uh, misdiagnose a patient with Alzheimer's and with Levy body dementia, for example, and this is very common. This happens every day at the clinical practice. So in the last year, as we uh, know each more time uh, more about the neuropathology of these situations, we are going to 
this part of the slide, and we are going to try to diagnose if you, we are uh, in a, a, a amyloidopathy, like Alzheimer's, or if we are talking about a synucleinopathy. But the question is that today, that um, today we don't have a biomarker uh, to try to detect these uh, proteins in the people, in the patient. In the last year, probably you heard about PET of amyloid and Alzheimer's and biomarkers in the cerebrospinal fluid and Alzheimer's. And this is very, very uh, useful. And we are now uh, in the cl routine clinical practice using these biomarkers. But we are still in the first stages of the research in other kinds of, um, of neurodegenerative diseases. For example, um, it's being developed the uh, PET for tau or PET for synuclein, but we are uh, still in the first stage of, of the research in this sense. And uh, it's not the topic of my talk, but in HIV patients, we, it's very common uh, to have a cognitive uh, decline. And if you can see, the problems uh, are similar to those that we observe in all the old people. For example, it's frequent to have attention, uh, prob atten uh, problems in attention, problems in working memory, uh, but in other, also other problems. And why is that? Well, you know better than me. Uh, is because of the direct effect of the virus in the nervous system. It's very frequent also in HIV patients to have a cerebrovascular disease. And there are also other indirect factors like uh, the use of drugs and also the effect that the drugs we give the patient, the antiretroviral drugs, also can uh, help um, to the cognitive decline. But now we have to take into account that uh, HIV people, uh, patients, are also old, and they can also have Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, frontotemporal dementia. This is a new scenario. Uh, before, probably all the patients uh, with HIV and cognitive decline have uh, this condition, HIV-associated neurocognitive disorders, but probably now we will start seeing patients with HIV and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So I think it's very, very important to assess the patient uh, uh, with a neuropsychological test uh, to diagnose which is exactly the problem uh, uh, with the cognitive decline of the patient, to try to diagnose better the patients, and it's very important to start the uh, neurocognitive stimulation uh, early and the treatment the patient needs for the specific disease we can diagnose. So my take home messages are that neurodegeneration affects everyone, but there's a huge variability among individuals. That aging human brain is not synonymous of, con uh, of cognitive decline. That we have some conditions like uh, cerebrovascular disease or hippocampal sclerosis, but we can have also uh, that are very frequent in the elderly, but we can have also uh, abnormal protein aggregation that we observe also in neurodegenerative diseases. And finally, that is not normal to have a cognitive decline with age. And dementia and other uh, neurodegenerative diseases are not part of normal, of normal aging. And it's very important to assess the patient properly to try to diagnose them uh, better and to give them uh, the management and the treatment better than we can. Thank you for your attention.